Hello everyone and welcome to Seemingly Wicked. This is Ren and I'm going to show you today how to make a coffin handbag. Make sure all of your pieces are cut out and prepped because I'm not showing you on video how to do that because we'll be here forever. Take your prepped D-ring and webbing and you're going to stitch those as close as you can to those D-rings just to secure them. I like to chain stitch whenever possible, so I'm going to go ahead and throw the other one on there and do the same thing. For your straps, you're going to need the remainder of the webbing left over, as well as two swivel clips and a strap adjuster. Insert the webbing into one of your swivel clips. Fold the raw end under about half an inch and clip it to the other side of the webbing. Move to the other side of your webbing, being sure not to twist the strap, and you're going to thread on your strap adjuster first, followed by a swivel clip. Take the end of the webbing and insert it into the far side underneath the strap adjuster. You're going to loop it around inside and then push it out through the other side of the strap adjuster. We're going to fold this raw edge over half an inch and stitch it down to the inner loop. Not the outer one, the inner one. Go ahead and stitch these by making a box with an X in it. I'm sitting over here wondering if anybody's going to actually watch me stitch these things or if they're just going to fast forward through this part because that's what I would do. It's kind of like those long intros that people have to their videos that nobody wants to fucking watch. Like, please just get into it. You know what I'm saying? The pieces you're going to need for this section are both the exterior fabric and lining pieces labeled zipper panel, your zipper tape, and your zipper poles. It's time for that zipper sandwich. I hope it's peanut butter and jelly. Honestly, I'm really hungry. You're going to take your exterior fabric panel piece and place the zipper tape with the teeth facing down, and then you're going to stick the liner on top of that. We're
we're going to go ahead and use a quarter of an inch seam allowance and stitch right down. It's not important for you to have the zipper pulls on at this point and they're more of a pain in the ass than anything so don't even put them on. Also, don't forget to put them back on, you know, later when you're going to put the bag together. We're going to go ahead and separate those layers and then you're going to press these seams flat or you can use a seam roller. What if I just started recording random shit in the middle and see if anybody notices? Hmm. And I'm just gonna roll, roll, roll with my pretty seam roller from Zorel Fabrics and Hardware. I'm obsessed with anything rainbow, so like obviously I had to have this and it's beautiful, right? Go ahead and top stitch that down. It's like an eighth of an inch away from that folded edge. Now you're just going to repeat what you did on the other side for the other half of the zipper panel and then it's done. I'm hoping by now you've already read the directions and you know that this piece needs to be trimmed. I couldn't find my three inch ruler so I just went with a bigger one and basically centered it at the halfway mark. Mark off where I need to trim. And then after I've marked both sides, I'm just gonna go ahead and trim that excess off. So your piece should be three inches wide exactly by 12.75 inches long.
If you have any excess zipper, just go ahead and trim that off. And then you're gonna go ahead and add on your zipper pulls because we wouldn't wanna do all this hard work and not have zippers, am I right? Look at that sexy zipper. For this gusset section, you're gonna need your completed zipper panel, your D-rings, and all four side panels, as well as the bottom panels. Baste the completed D-ring to the top center of the exterior side panels. I leave about one inch extending past the raw edge. Do not trim this. Just don't do it. Since we're just basting these on, I'm going to go ahead and chain stitch these on. Turn your piece over and you're going to measure a quarter of an inch from the edge and just mark that on all four corners. Take your zipper panel right side up and you're gonna take that external side panel piece and place it right side facing together. I like to clip that in place and then place the lining piece right sides together with the lining piece of the zipper panel. This part is very important. You are going to stitch starting at that quarter of an inch to the other end, stopping quarter of an inch before the end. Do not go past. We're gonna go ahead and flip those open and press that seam. And we're going to stitch starting at that quarter of an inch and ending a quarter of an inch before the edge. Remember, we're gonna hinge these so we are not going edge to edge. After you're done top stitching, you're gonna go ahead and repeat the same on the other side of the zipper panel. And this is what she looks like after the side pieces are attached. So now we're gonna go ahead and start with the bottom pieces. Go ahead and mark quarter of an inch from the edge all the way around on all four corners. Again, we are hinging our pieces, so we wanna make sure we start and stop at these quarter of an inch marks. And attaching the bottom panel piece to the side panel pieces we are only going to attach them right sides together for the outside so the exterior with the exterior layers and the lining with the lining layers we are not going to be stitching them together you're gonna start quarter of an inch from the edge there and stop quarter of an inch before the other end repeat this step with the bottom panel liner and side panel You're gonna flip these seams out and top stitch both sides down on both of the exterior pieces and the lining pieces.
And these are how the little hinges look. They work nice. After you've completed sewing the bottom panel to one of the side panels, you're going to go ahead and separate those layers again and attach it to the other side panel from the opposite side. Repeat the same steps that you've been using for the other seams on the gusset. At this point our gusset is done and we are going to go ahead and add the bias tape to it. I find that this way makes it easier overall to finish the bag than it does to complete the bag and then add the binding after. If that makes sense. If it doesn't, oh well. Here I'm just going to clip around both sides of the gusset so that the pieces stay in place. Fold the raw edge of the bias tape over about half an inch. We're going to join this at the center bottom of the gusset. You're going to continue clipping and adding your binding all the way around. When you get back to the bottom center, you're just going to overlap that a little bit and clip that in place. Trim the excess. You're going to take this to the machine and run a basting stitch all the way around the gusset. Once you're finished, you're going to repeat the same on the other side. 
I'm almost positive that my phone stopped recording at that point, so I don't have myself putting the binding on it, but you could imagine that I just repeated everything I did. And we got to this part. So you're gonna baste it again. I'm going to mark about half an inch down from the seam and that's where I'm going to put the hole for my rivets. While I do love my press, I don't know what I did with the rest of the die, so I'm going to be hammering this by hand, which means I have to do it on the floor because I'm a basement troll. So you just get to see the end result. Lucky you. Now we're going to match up those side seams so that we can get our center top and bottom. You're going to mark that or cut out a little bit of the seam allowance. Repeat that on both sides of the top and bottom. We are almost there, I promise. So in this next step, you're just going to put the wrong sides of the liner and the exterior together, and then you're gonna base that together. You're gonna to do that for both panels, the front and the back of the bag. Once these pieces are basted, you're going to need to fold them in half and do the same as you did on the gusset and trim the centers or mark it, whatever. If this is your first time making this bag, I suggest drawing out your seam allowances first. So you're going to draw the quarter of an inch all the way around the coffin. This is going to make a lot more sense as you get further along in this part of the video. Now I'm going to take the sections that intersect and I'm going to shade that. That is going to be my start stop spots. <laughs> start that's a mouthful. 
All right, goals, we are now in the home stretch. Let's get this done. So we're going to match our center bottom of the coffin to the center bottom of the gusset. Here I'm just showing you how some of those hinges work. When you get to the corners there, you don't want to be cutting into that seam. So it just gives you a little bit of ease there. And match the center top with the center top of the coffin. I hope that makes sense. You'll see in the video. And here is where those shaded start stop spots come in handy. Yeah, that's still a mouthful. I need to come up with something different. But anyway, yeah, so you're going to stitch from one black corner to the other. You're not going to go all the way to the edge because then you've gone too far. After you've gotten to your stopping point, you are going to take it off the machine and trim your tails. Repeat the same on the bottom. Then when you've had enough of the starting and stopping, you're going to do it again on the other side of the coffin, only on the tops and bottoms. Then we're going to move along to the next part. Here I'm going to find the corner and I'm going to cut a relief slit on a diagonal. So what I'm going to do is cut it into the gusset so that it is where that corner would be. And I'm going to snip right before the end of the stitch line, not through the stitches because you don't want to do that. You're going to ruin all your hard work. Go ahead and repeat that same process on the other top and bottom corners of the coffin. Then we're going to go on to the sides and I'm so happy because we're almost there. I've just been rambling on and this is the other side of the coffin so you know if you wanted to see that feel free to watch it or you know skip ahead because you're not gonna hurt my feelings. Now I'm kind of wondering if anybody will sit here and watch it through or if they'll just skip ahead. If I should just like say random stuff like, hey, ditto on this side. Yeah, that's, that's, I need sleep.
Here I'm clipping the top sides of the coffin and I'm going to do that on both sides. And here we are. I've gone ahead and marked off where my side seam is because that is going to be my stopping point. So I'm going to go from the top of the coffin to that side seam and I'm going to stop right there. So you're going to repeat that process on all four sides of the top part of the coffin. The moment we've all been waiting for, we are almost there. At this point, all of your top side pieces should be completed. And the only thing left to sew is our side bottom pieces. So yeah, let's get to it. Um, just pin or clip those pieces into place. If they don't fit because there's not enough space, you're going to have to add a little bit more of the relief slits around like where the corners are. But you shouldn't have a problem at this point getting it to sit flat. Once you've got those all clipped, you're just going to simply sew from the corner to the corner. You're just going to go right in those existing stitches. Don't go over, don't go less. We want to go for precise here. And it's not the most simple thing. You will fight with it. And I'm sorry if any part of this video makes it look easy because I am always fighting with it.
when you finish one side, you're going to go ahead and finish all four sides. Don't forget to leave your zipper open. It's not impossible to get it open once you've done those side seams, but just do, just do it. Home stretch was like, I don't know how long ago. Um, so is this the end game? Okay. Anyway, so we're going to trim our corners and then we're going to trim like a scant eighth of an inch off of the seam allowance so that there's less bulk. I think now is also a good time to mention that you should press your seams before you finish off your binding. Trust me, you are in a world full of annoyance if you do it the other way around. Just do it. Just press the seams beforehand. It might be a little bit of extra work, but just, just do it. So this next part is really easy. You're just going to fold the binding in on itself and basically encase that raw edge. And then you're going to clip or pin it down over the stitches that you made in the previous round. This always takes me entirely too long and I just hate it. So yeah, just go ahead and do that all the way around. And then we're going to stitch it.
When you are ready to stitch down the binding, I would suggest doing about a 1 8 of an inch away from that seam because I don't like to sew through my perfect corners and like, what if I mess up and then I have like a wobbly coffin? Who, like wobbly coffin? Yeah, I need, I need either a lot of coffee or a lot of sleep. And here you're in for the fight of your life because pushing those pieces under the presser foot sometimes is just a pain in the butt, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, like, just have fun with that. Have a lot of fun with that. Because as soon as you're done with this, you're done. You're done done. Like, for realsies. And yes, I realize at this point that my videos may be backwards or forwards or whatever at certain points. And you know what? You get the gist of it. I, I am trying my best. Congratulations, you've made it this far. I get to go die now, and you get to watch me turn this bag right side out. No birthing required. Would this be considered a C-section? Done.